Hey, how's it going guys? So uh, this is probably one of the videos you've been waiting to see here. I'm going to start porting uh, my irons today. I, I got my uh, center iron I'm going to start on. Like it takes quite a bit of work so like it won't be finished today but uh, I'll get a good chunk of it done and everything here. So I got it all set up. I'll just head over there and uh, I'll show you that. Alright so I got my uh, center iron set up here. So I got this stuff here. It's uh, Toolmaker's ink blue dye stuff there. So pretty much just give it like a couple good coats there. Yeah, so it's nice and thick. Get one more right there. Yeah, and now I'm just going to let that dry and uh, then I can get my template over here and scribe in the one line there. So, Alright, so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I got this other turbo part here. So you can see on the fins on this one, they're still in like perfect shape. So uh, the seal didn't make its way through that one. So and this is a secondary turbo off that spare set I had. So I just have to switch off that compressor housing now and uh, I should have a pretty decent set of turbos. I got this turbo apart here. This is the old one. You can see the fins are completely screwed there. So anyways, I got that big snap ring out. Oh, but this is like the compressor housing. So basically all I have to do now is just take off this compressor housing here and uh, swap this one on there. Put them all back together. Alright, so I put the compressor housing in the parts cleaner there and got it all clean, make it look all new there. I got the exhaust housing here, I cleaned that all up in the parts cleaner too, but uh, anyways, like I'm going to port the wastegate right here, so like it's just a, so it uh, helps with like controlling boost creep and stuff, like, because when you put the freer flowing exhaust and all that on these, uh, kind of like overpowers the wastegate there, and so like it can't flow enough, uh, like it can't dump off enough of the boost there at the wastegate so it ends up giving you like too much boost and that's when you like blow your engine and stuff so just helps with boost creep pretty much so anyways I'm gonna uh, get started on that right now and uh, port that out so I can put my turbos back together I still have to clean off the the compressor housing for the secondary turbo there but then they'll both look pretty much like brand new yeah, so basically just leave like the wastegate door closed and then get like, you can either use paint, I have this dye here, so might as well use that, like get her down in the corners and stuff. And then uh, I'm going to let that dry and then when I open the wastegate door I'll be able to see like how much of an overlap there is there, so I'll know exactly like how much I can pour it without taking off too much. Alright, so now that it's a little bit more dry, I can uh, see like pretty much how much I can take off. Like, I don't want to go all the way to that line. Like, I still want to leave like a sliver of metal, like so it can still seal pretty decent around there. But there's still like pretty decent amount of material I can take out of there, though. But the one thing you want to always check for is like you can see right here in the corner, I have a little crack there. But I don't know, it's not too bad. There's like none really around. Uh, the flanges on the exhaust so I don't know it's not the best but it's good enough to work alright so I got the wastegate ported pretty good there so you can kinda see like if you look really good there you can see like the ledge of carbon there so there's not a lot of material left there but should be good like seal up nice and everything and uh, flow a little bit better so I smoothed it out you can look it's pretty smooth in there so uh, just so it, like the carbon doesn't build up and everything so these things are pretty much ready to go back together like I got both the compressor housings pretty clean there so there's a couple dirty fingerprints on them now but this one's nice too so once those are back together it should be uh, pretty good so that stuff's all dry now so I'll hit my light here so it comes up but you can see like the difference in the, the stock port from this uh, port here so this is like a medium street port right here so it's not too bad. This one's actually like a medium street port for uh, the FC, like the second gen or X7. Like, but uh, I'm gonna be using it on here since like it works so good on mine. Cause like I have the medium street port templates for the third gen or X7s there, but the exhaust port's like pretty big. So I'm just gonna keep it with the smaller exhaust port there to keep the torque and stuff up. So just about to scribe in the line there, and then I'll uh, take off the template there and I'll show you it after. Alright, so I got the line scribed in there, it kind of went on crappy, but uh, still good enough, I can see it. But uh, anyways, like no matter how good you are with the die grinders and all that, I always like put down a couple layers of duct tape around there just to protect it, because like 
no matter what, you'll end up slipping once or twice there, but the duct tape gives you like the extra layer of protection there, so just about to cover that all up and I can start grinding. Alright, so I got a couple layers of duct tape down here, so you can see it's just on the outside edge of that line I just scribed in there, but I'm only going to be doing like a rough cut, like I won't be taking it right to the line right now, so I don't know, right now I can pretty much just start uh, shaping the port and all that, and uh, getting down in there, you can see like the ledge just from where the stock port's cut in there, and smoothing all that out. Alright, just to show you some of the tools I use, like I use these little uh, electric die grinder things there, but get the extension wand here and stuff for them so you can get down inside the runners and all that but I always buy these things like when they're on sale you know for like 10 or 15 bucks but then I have like the Mastercraft sets that I buy I got probably like two of those so I always just like stock up on them there so pretty much all these have like every little grinding stone you pretty much need to do it yeah so this kit's missing a few things because I've had it for a bit but uh you can see like it has all the different little grinding stones and uh, these are for like glass, etching in glass and stuff like that so you get quite a bit of like good little parts there for uh, like 10 or 15 bucks so you can't really complain. So I got it all ready to go here, I got this little wand here with uh, that little like cylinder style uh, grinding stone there so basically, just hit my light for you. Yeah, I'm just going to start going around and taking down this edge a little bit here so just to get it pretty much shaped. Alright, so I've just been working away at this a little bit, so I'll take that off. You can see, uh, blow it off first there for you. Like, I haven't went totally to this line here. There's still a little bit of a ledge there, so I'm just going to wait until uh, I get it completely shaped. That way I can get it all nice and smooth in there. So I still have a bit up here at the top, right up in this corner a bit, but uh, that's like all solid going up into there. And then down at the bottom, there's just like a little bit of a lift there, but... You can see, uh, just in this corner, like here, while I've been like uh, bringing it up there, I've been just uh, working on getting it all smooth right in here. So, yeah, so like once I bring it up into this little ledge here, it should uh, be nice and smooth coming in from here. So, just gotta keep working away at it because once I get the shapes uh, ported out here, like the actual timing marks, like, uh, a lot of the work's just down in this part right in here, just getting everything uh, opened up and smoothed out there, so. Alright, so I've just been working away at the ports here, so I got this side pretty good, like, it's not totally to the line there, there's still like that little ledge you can see, but, uh, anyways, uh, it's like pretty shape, much shaped in the corner in there, so, pretty much just working at keeping it like smooth so it just flows good and stuff there, so it's pretty smooth in there. So I'm pretty much going to have to move over to this side and uh, start working on there because it's still quite a ways away from the edge. But uh, you have to grind down like this factory, the ledge from where the factory machining and stuff was. So, uh, but once that's all smoothed out, then I got to move into the runners here because uh, you make like half your power with the timing marks and the other half's pretty much through these. Like, cause you just want to get it as uh, free flowing as you possibly can. Like, you can see pretty good there that. That one's like not too bad. I don't know if it just will show up as a big fuzz, but anyways, uh, I don't know. I just got to keep working away at those. All right, for this side, I switched up my uh, bit there. I'm using like one of these cone style ones there. So hit my light so you get the best look. But see like so I can just get down in there and uh, get that all shaped good. Then I got to start just working down this groove in here. Get like a nice channel all the way across. So these ones work out the best for that. Alright, so you can see it's coming along pretty good there, so there's still just a bit left around the edges. So, uh, I'm just gonna, like, pretty much, I won't take any more off for now, I'm just gonna work on, uh, getting it down in the bowl there, freaking all smooth. So it's, it's pretty good, you can see, like, up in there, that edge is starting to come along pretty good, that factory ledge from the machining's all gone there, so, it's not too bad. Alright, for doing the runners, I have like this set up here. It's just one of these things with the handle taken off there, so it'll fit in there. But I use these little like reamer bit things there, so I'm just about to get started on that. I got it all set up there. So. Alright, so you've seen this one's pretty close to where it needs to be. So I started working on the runner here. You can see like in there, it's coming along pretty good. Like, still a few spots like where it hasn't even started grinding yet. But I'm just working on like opening that up in there. 
just uh, getting it like flowing smooth to the port there so you can see like I'm touching my finger to the top there's like that little ledge there so pretty much just work that down and uh, just even it out so uh, I don't know like there's still quite a bit more grinding on this one just to get everything like completely smooth then there's like just a crap load of sand and just to get it like friggin as smooth as it can be but because like usually you only sand it to a, with about like 220 grit so it's still sort of rough because you want like a uh, good fuel atomization and stuff like that so anyways uh, tomorrow I'm pretty much going to get started on uh, this side and put my turbos back together so that's pretty much it for this video. Yeah, let me know if you guys want me to set up like my camera on the tripod there and uh, get like action shots while I'm actually uh, doing the porting work there. So I don't know if you guys just want to see like the different angles or anything I use or all that freaking, but you can see like the stock port there. So and the uh, somewhat ported side here. So anyways, I'll talk to you guys later.